all right welcome to the second video on stress strain curves in this video we are going to cover the remaining stress strain curves that we didn't cover in our last video so let's dive into this lecture all right so in our previous video we talked about mild steel specimen in tension now let's see how a mild steel specimen behaves in compression so let's draw the stress strain curve of mild steel in compression it kind of looks like this so if mild steel is subjected to compression instead of tension the stress strain curve will essentially be same through its initial straight line portion so if i draw the stress strain graph in tension so you can see that the slope is same in both tension and compression and since the slope is same the modulus of elasticity in tension will also be equal to the modulus of elasticity in compression and also the angles will also be same of these two straight lines and also note that there is no knacking occurs in compression and also in compression mild steel has slightly greater yield stress in compression than in tension and this was all about the stress strain curve of mild steel in compression and now let's see how other materials behave under stress so for this graph we have taken pure steel carbon steel high strength low alloy steel and quenched or tempered alloy steel so let's draw the stress strain curve for these four type of metals some of the physical properties of structural metals such as strength ductility and corrosion resistance can be greatly affected by alloying so you can see that as we move upward the rupture strain decreases and this is because of the percentage of carbon present in these four type of metals as with the increase in carbon percentage steel gets higher yield stress and higher ultimate stress but the fracture strain reduces and this quenched tempered alloy steel can also be known as tool steel or high tension steel and among all the steel grades high tension steel is more brittle and mild steel is more ductile and from the figure you can see that all these four grades of steel follow the same linear path initially and therefore have same modulus of elasticity and for these four different grades of steel yield stress ultimate stress and fracture strain differ greatly all right i want to tell you that yield strength or yield stress is the property of a material and it is defined as the stress at which a material begins to deform plastically whereas yield point is the point where nonlinear deformation begins and before this yield point the material deforms elastically and it will return to its original shape when the applied stress is removed and once the yield point is passed some fraction of the deformation will be permanent and non reversible and this yield point determines the limit of performance of mechanical components since it represents the upper limit to the forces that can be applied without permanent deformation and besides this we have proof stress and it is that point where 0.2% plastic deformation occurs while returning to its original shape all right sometimes in ductile materials if they do not have any defined yield point their yield strength is defined by a method called offset method for example in aluminum or copper so let's first draw the stress strain graph of aluminum and let's find out how its yield strength or yield stress can be calculated so now the figure is drawn a line parallel to the initial straight line portion of the stress strain curve is drawn through a point uh, of 0.2% strain and the point where it cuts the stress strain curve gives the yield stress or the proof stress at 0.2% strain and this method is called as offset method and this offset yield stress or 0.2% proof stress is not a material property it is used for calculation purpose only so the point at which this 0.2% strain parallel line will cut this curve will give you the yield stress of aluminum also known as proof stress and there are various ductile materials whose yield stresses can be determined by this method for example aluminum copper magnesium lead nickel boron bronze nylon teflon and so many others also so now moving on let's see how a stress strain diagram will work out for brittle materials in tension brittle materials which includes cast iron glass and stone are characterized by the fact that rupture occurs without any noticeable prior change in the rate of elongation 
and brittle materials such as concrete or carbon fiber do not have any yield point and they do not strain harden and therefore the ultimate strength and breaking strength are same and uh, materials like glass do not show any plastic deformation and even fail in the elastic deformation and one of the characteristics of brittle failure is that the two broken parts can be reassembled to produce the same shape as the original component as there will be no neck formation as it was in the case of ductile materials and the graph of brittle materials is kind of linear and for some materials like concrete tensile strength is negligible as compared to the compressive strength and it is assumed zero for many engineering applications so as you can see in the figure that strain at rupture is very very smaller as compared to the ductile materials and i have already told you that rupture stress is equal to the ultimate stress in the case of brittle materials in tension and uh, no necking occurs and rupture occurs along a surface perpendicular to the load and normal stresses are primarily responsible for the failure of brittle materials and if we talk about brittle materials in compression then for most brittle materials the ultimate strength in compression is much larger than ultimate strength in tension and the linear elastic range in compression is larger as compared to that in tension and the modulus of elasticity is same in tension as in compression uh, and this was pretty much about the stress strain curve of brittle materials in tension and compression so we have talked about various type of stress strain curves now let's talk about the actual stress strain curve and the engineering stress strain curve so the actual stress strain curve is the one which is drawn on the basis of actual area of cross section and actual length at any time and the engineering curve is the one which is drawn using the original length and the original area i want to tell you that as elongation or contraction takes place the cross-sectional area at any section x and the length of the test specimen also changes till now we have been plotting the stress strain curve using the original length and the original area and if stress strain curve is plotted corresponding to the actual area of x section and actual length at any time during straining we get true stress strain diagram so from the figure you can see that the yield point in tension is pretty much same in both of the curves and it should be noted that there is no decrease in true stress during necking although the applied load value decreases during necking but you also have to remember that the cross sectional area of necking region also decreases so on dividing the load with area will give you pretty much higher values than engineering stress strain curve so the true stress strain curve is slightly above the engineering stress strain curve and the rupture stress is also greater than the engineering rupture stress and for practical purposes we only use engineering stress strain curve and during compression the true stress strain curve is below engineering stress strain curve in compression because the resisting area in compression increases and there is also a relationship between engineering stress and actual stress which is actual stress is equal to engineering stress into 1 plus minus engineering strain and for tension we take positive sign and for compression we take the negative sign and this was all about the various type of stress strain curves if you found this video helpful then please hit that like button it really motivates me to create more videos for you and if you have any doubt query or suggestion then you can tell me in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because more videos like this are coming for you cheers